Our scripture text is found in Psalm 104. O Lord, what a variety of things you have made. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. Here is the ocean, vast and wide, teeming with life of every kind, both large and small. We see the ships sailing along and Leviathan, which you made to play in the sea. They all depend on you to give them food as they need it. When you supply it, they gather it. You open your hand to feed them, and they are richly satisfied. But if you turn away from them, they panic. When you take away their breath, they die and turn again to dust. When you give them breath, life is created and you renew the face of the earth. May the glory of the Lord continue forever. The Lord takes pleasure in all he has made. The earth trembles at his glance. The mountains smoke at his touch. I will sing to the Lord as long as I live. I will praise my God to my last breath. May all my thoughts be pleasing to him, for I rejoice in the Lord. Let all that I am praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today we're going to begin with a report that some of the most successful companies in history is also a company with some outrageous stink bombs. Sometimes we work on a project or an idea and it turns out to be a dud. We Turn then to the text where the psalmist takes a look at what the cosmic engineer did with creation and gives it a total thumbs up. Microsoft is one of the most successful companies in all of history, creating three billionaires and 12,000 millionaires among its employees. But the company has had a few major design flops. Fast Company Magazine in October 2012 lists a few of them. Bob, do you remember Bob? Released in 1995, Bob was a software product designed to make it easier to use the computer. Bob featured a cartoon character named Rover the Dog. If you didn't recognize Bob, you may recognize Rover, who would escape Lucky Camper and try to explain everything that you didn't need explanations of. Bob was childish, convoluted, ridiculous, and despised, according to Fast Company. Even Microsoft executive Steve Ballmer said Bob was an example of the situation where Microsoft decided that we have not su succeeded and let's stop. And then there was Office Assistant. This program came out just two years later in 1997. It featured an animated cra character named Clippy. He was one of these things. He would tap on the screen and try to guess what you were working on. Clippy's always smiled and cheerfully offered to help, even if you were working on a funeral service. None of you, but I have done that. Clippy drew intensely negative responses from many users. Even its creator called it one of the most annoying characters in history. Although Office Assistant has been replaced, Clippy lives on. In an episode of the television show Family Guy, Stewie sneaks into CIA headquarters and uses one of its computers. He becomes annoyed when Clippy appears on the screen and says, I see you are trying to take over the world. Can I help? Stewie yells, go away, you paperclip. No one likes you. Poor Clippy a major design flop. The list goes on to include the famous blue screen of death and Windows Vista 2007. 
which was such a mess that some people thought good old Bob was hiding inside of their computers. But let's not pick on Microsoft. Every company has its flops, including many incredibly successful corporations. Apple is often given credit for excellent design, but do remember its personal computer, Lisa, from the early 1980s? Most people don't. It was a commercial failure. And of course, you remember the recent debacle with the introduction of one of its latest iPhones and the problem that they had with the GPS map app. I think that the biography of Steve Jobs has gr great insight to how important design was to Apple. He actually hired a designer for the computers and their packaging. In addition, note the thought and detail that went into the insides of the computer that were put together under his leadership. Parts inside an Apple computer that would never be seen still had to be beautiful, according to Jobs. It's awesome how God has put us together and designed us that, with things that will never be seen but are truly amazing. Take your eye. You see the iris, but hidden retina you never see. But it is what does the seeing, not any part of your eye that sees. What about your skeleton? You never, well, there are occasions when bones break and you see a part of your skeleton. But as a rule, you don't see that skeleton. But what would you be? A jellyfish without it? God designed all of that so that we could work the way that we work. So what needs to go into a divine design? Psalm 104 outlines the creative work of Almighty God, which ranges from heaven to earth and includes Clouds, winds, fire, water, cattle, plants, wine, oil, bread, trees, birds, goats, lions, people, sun, and moon. O Lord, how many are your works, says the psalm. In wisdom you have made them all. The earth is full of your creatures. God's design begins with wisdom. The word for wisdom, chokmah, in the original Hebrew means more than just knowledge. It means technical skill in construction. So God is a divine engineer as well as an architect, a doer as well as a dreamer, a construction worker as well as an artist, a tinkerer as well as a thinker. Even something as wild and as chaotic as the sea is part of God's design and is under his control. Yonder is the sea, great and wide, observes the psalm. Creeping things innumerable are there, living things both great and small. There go the ships and Leviathan that you formed to play in it. Leviathan was a great chaos monster thought to live in the sea, a terrifying image to many people in the ancient world. But here, Leviathan is as harmless as a bath toy, a rubber ducky, part of God's divine design. What God creates in wisdom, God also nourishes. God does not treat his creatures like computer users treated Bob, the Microsoft product that was quickly abandoned and left to die. These all look to you to give them their food in due season, says the psalm. When you give to them, they gather it up. When you open your hand, they are filled with good things. Now, most of us don't grow our own food, but those who do grow their food marketed it and God has given it to us in that way. God gives his creatures exactly what they need for life, including food and drink that nourish animals of all kinds, wild animals as well as human beings. Unfortunately, we fail to trust God fully to meet our needs. We fear that resources are scarce and that we hoard what we have 
or we fear that resources are scarce, so we charge on a credit card that we can't pay off at the end of the month. We never feel that we have enough, writes Old Testament scholar Walter Brueggemann. We have to have more and more, and this insatiable desire destroys us. Whether we are liberal or conservative Christians, we must confess that the central problem of our lives is that we are torn apart. And what is it exactly that tears us apart? It's a conflict, says Brueggemann, between abundance and scarcity. We are torn about by the conflict between our attraction to the good news of God's abundance and the power of our belief in society, a belief that makes us greedy, mean, and unneighborly. Think about this. When we believe the good news of God's abundance, we share generously with others, act with kindness, and love our neighbors as ourselves. But when we believe in scarcity, we act in ways that are greedy, we keep things to ourselves instead of sharing them with others. It all comes down to what we believe about God's design. So what does the Lord design with wisdom and what the Lord nourishes, the Lord offers to us. Scripture tells us that God has created the world in which everyone has enough, and Psalm 104 is a song that celebrates this abundance. Brueggemann says that verses 27 and 28 are something like a table prayer, thanking God for giving us food in due season and filling all of his creatures with good things. Then the psalm describes God as a great respirator, breathing life into the world. In Genesis, the word says, he breathed into Adam life. It's that breath that he breathed was ruah, the breath of God. So it was his own breath that he gave to Adam, which means that he's given to all people. When we breathe so easily, until we have a problem, Remember that that is the breath of God giving us life every moment of every day. When you send forth your spirit, they are created and renew the face of the ground. In this verse, spirit and breath are the very same Hebrew word, reminding us that God breathes life into all of his creatures, not just humans. God offers everyone food in due season, and this fills us all with good things, including the breath of life. That's a divine design, and it's one for which we should be thankful. The first Christians discovered this abundance for themselves on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Spirit rushed like a wind into a gathering of the apostles. If you haven't already looked over here, come Holy Spirit, teach us, guide us. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit, the life-giving breath of God, over and above the just the breathing that we do how many times a minute? But more than that, true life. The life-giving breath of God, and they began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. The Lord's design is a generous design. Notice the generosity of God, giving all of them this precious gift of multilingual communication, the ability to understand what someone else was saying. Then the abundance spills out into the streets where there were devout Jews from every nation living in Jerusalem. They were bewildered because each of them heard them speaking in the native language of each, 
Acts tells us that they were all amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? What does it mean? The apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit, all of them. They began to speak in other languages. Every one of them, of the apostles, devout Jews were living in Jerusalem from every nation where they had been spread. They heard the apostles speaking in their native languages, a wide variety of them. There were more than 12 nations of peoples present, hearing more than 12 and there were 11 apostles left speaking. Each one heard in the language that they understood best. The Jews were amazed, but they were perplexed. They didn't understand what was happening. All of them, every one of them, every nation, every language, the breath of God fills everyone with good things and creates something new, the international cross-cultural multilingual Christian church was born that day. No myth of scarcity limits the reach of the Holy Spirit. As a newly courageous apostle, Peter proclaims to the crowd, in the last day it will be, God declares, that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh, all flesh, all people, every one of God's creatures. In the business and corporate world, companies are going to suffer design flaws from time to time. Even within the church, we will try certain things that won't work, but we don't stop there. We need to try something else. We need to depend on God's guidance to guide us to the next thing. Today's text shows us that in the divine design, there are no flaws. Psalm 104 promises that God sends forth his spirit to renew the face of the ground. And at Pentecost, God sent forth his spirit to move upon the face of the church. Now filled with the Spirit of God, we can participate in this renewal by sharing generously with others as part of the divine design. The Lord continues to create today throughout the power of the Holy Spirit. And it is not about us. It's not even about what we can do. But it's how well we can work with God, with his gifts, his strength, his guidance, and our giving praise to God for all of his work in all of creation. Let us pray. O oh Lord our God, with a dove descending in the cloud of flame, we are reminded that on the day of Pentecost, your spirit fell on the apostle and all of those present. And if I'm remembering right, about 3,000 were joined to the church that day. We admit on our own, we don't have that kind of power. But we do pray that you would open us to be willing to receive your power and to let our bodies go through the motions as we allow your spirit to work through us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen.